Hi everyone, welcome to Difference Frames the World, a permanently demonetized channel to review world affairs from a different angle. YouTube demonetized our channel at the end of 2021, since then, we have never received a penny from the platform. It still uses our videos to attract advertisers and generates income, which we are not eligible for. Viewers do not have to watch all those commercials to support us unless the content of advertisements brings more value than ours. We still do our best to keep the channel alive, and thanks to our supporters and patrons who have been at our back for such a long time, DFTW is still alive, as Celine Dion sings in her song, I am alive. Many things happen worldwide every day, big and small, attracting eyeballs. Here we sincerely show sympathy to the Turkish people suffering from the earthquake. Western media show less interest in those sufferers than in the Chinese balloons, one of which U.S. President Joe Biden ordered to shoot down. A U.S. military fighter jet shot down that suspected Chinese balloon off the South Carolina coast a week after it entered U.S. airspace. The Chinese balloon has proven the superb quality and performance of made-in-China products, which few Western media, if not zero, has mentioned. However, most news outlets in the West exaggeratedly highlighted that the balloon has also triggered a dramatic public saga to worsen the bad relations between Beijing and Washington. U.S. politicians are scared to death, and the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken decided to postpone his trip to China in response to the monster from China. Beijing admitted that the balloon was from China, but a Chinese company owned it for civilian use, not a spy device as propagated by Western media and politicians. It is not the first time a Chinese balloon has flown to other countries, and the US is the first and only nation that uses an F-22 to shoot it down, instead of dealing with it through diplomatic channels. According to a Chinese diplomat in Paris, US balloons also entered China's airspace several times, but China never made a fuss over them. However, the US has made full use of the accident to exaggerate the so-called threat from China. Reuters quoted Pentagon spokesman Patrick Ryder claiming that the balloon is currently flying well above civilian air traffic altitude and does not pose a military or physical threat to personnel on the ground. A CNN report says Ryder claimed that they were confident the balloon belonged to China and that the US had encountered similar situations in years past. He added that although the balloon's flight path passed through some sensitive locations, it did not pose a significant intelligence-gathering risk. Still, Western media and some U.S. officials do not think the Pentagon has told the truth about China's balloon posing little threat to the United States. On February 8, 2023, a non-binding resolution condemning China for the balloon was passed, with all 419 U.S. lawmakers supporting it. However, China has repeatedly denied the balloon was used for intelligence-gathering purposes, saying the balloon was a weather device blown astray unexpectedly. The U.S. lawmakers believe the balloon belongs to a fleet of surveillance balloons monitoring the whole world, calling it a brazen violation of U.S. sovereignty. Interestingly, not even one member of Congress was against the resolution. The so-called China invasion of U.S. airspace triggered a diplomatic crisis. It led U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to cancel a trip to China, which China says was not officially announced. China has not openly invited the U.S. Secretary of State to visit Beijing, based on what the newly appointed Chinese spokeswoman said. It does not matter whether he cancels the trip. Antony Blinken had to postpone it, as the anti-China voice in Washington was desperate. Even though Beijing says the balloon was blown astray, it is a rarely found opportunity to exhilarate patriotism among ordinary Americans not interested in the alleged China threat. The U.S. military has spent nearly a trillion U.S. dollars a year to protect the country, and theoretically, its allies. Still, it could not do anything to a strayed Chinese balloon. Only when the balloon lowered its altitude, 50% closer to the U.S. mainland surface, did the U.S. military use an F-22, the country's most advanced fighter jet, to shoot the balloon down over the Atlantic Ocean on February 4 when it was about to leave the U.S. sovereignty. Suppose the Chinese balloon was a spy device propagated by Western media and politicians. It should have sent enough sensitive information back to Beijing. The White House and the Pentagon did nothing to stop it, putting 330 million grassroots and a handful of elites in danger, which is unbearable.
The U.S. can send its surveillance airplanes and spy devices to other countries' airspace and coastlines, and it can even shed millions of shells on other nations' lands. However, the United States is not omnipotent and cannot stop a bird from flying across the U.S. sky. The Chinese balloon was like a bird. It was blown from China's Xinjiang to the United States by wind, a guest the U.S. politicians should warmly welcome, as it is from their favorite place in China. Not even one U.S. lawmaker welcomes it. Instead, 419 Congress members condemn China for using the alleged spy balloon to invade America's sovereignty. When the uncontrollable Chinese balloon was about to leave the U.S., at the height of nearly 20,000 meters above the open water at the edge of the United States, ready to visit another vastness that does not belong to the world's most potent country, an F-22 found its opportunity to shot down the balloon because the made-in-USA missiles could target it in the air. The U.S. military claimed that the F-22 launched one missile worth hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of U.S. dollars and successfully destroyed the balloon, made of cheap materials not worth more than 5,000 U.S. dollars. It is not an outstanding achievement to brag about, indeed. Moreover, based on the footage disclosed, some reckon that the U.S. should have launched three missiles, not one, to shoot down the balloon, making the battle the least cost-effective in human history. According to a French economist's theory, a broken window could boost a country's economy, and John Maynard Keynes, one of the most famous economists in history, also encouraged private companies to dig holes, unearthing money the government hides beneath the garbage to create new jobs and wealth. The wasted U.S. missiles, be it one or three, serve the same purpose. We can imagine how much wealth and jobs will be created in 2023 to boost the U.S. economy. There might be more Chinese balloons out of control in the future, and they will probably enter the U.S. sovereignty again. Will the U.S. military shoot them down? What can the U.S. military do if those Chinese balloons will not lower themselves to a level that U.S. missiles can reach? The Pentagon will have to hire an Indian magician to climb above the cloud to pierce those Chinese balloons with a needle, most likely. From this incident, we can find the relationship between Beijing and Washington is dangerous. Although President Joe Biden claims that the U.S. does not want to confront China, he and his subordinates are forced to anger Beijing with all means they can think of. Joe Biden's democratic government has to show its toughness toward Beijing, which is even more crucial for the White House when Republicans control the House of Representatives. The Biden administration has long been criticized for its weakness when facing an assertive Chinese leader, President Xi Jinping, pictured by the Western media as a dictator. When the 2024 campaign for the presidency is on its way, Biden must be harsh on China, even though he is unlikely to win the re-election for various reasons. The so-called Chinese spy balloon incident is not a big deal, and it will not harm the deteriorating relationship between the two countries, which can hardly be worse anymore. Still, some U.S. warmongers want to use it to foster hatred against China among ordinary Americans, so they can get their support when they launch a war with China in 2025 or later. People frequently use the Thucydides trap when discussing the fractious relations between Beijing and Washington, and many agree with the inevitability of armed conflict shortly. Even if the bilateral trade reaches a record $760 billion in 2022 between the two countries, and the U.S. has intertwined interests in China, some analysts believe the rising popularism or nationalism, concerted military competitions, and increasingly belligerent rhetoric have put both nations on fire. America's four-star general, Mike Minahan, warned the U.S. troops of a potential war with China in 2025 because of Taiwan. Still, the Pentagon immediately denied that his comments are not representative of the department's view on China. General Mike Minahan heads the Air Force's Air Mobility Command, a high-rank official in Pentagon. If he cannot represent the U.S. military and the Pentagon is not hostile toward China, why is he not fired for his irresponsible remarks? He is a nobody if we do not add the title general before his name, and he enjoys the freedom of speech. But as a four-star general, head of such an important command, he cannot frighten the world with his startling remarks. Expressing his personal opinion is separate from his job when he leads 110,000 members unless he purposely does so to complicate the situation. It also shows some U.S. militants want to stop China's rise before it is too late, especially when Russia is not as strong in the Ukraine war as it seemed before. 
The Chinese army has not been at war with any country for decades, so it is reasonable for the Pentagon to doubt Chinese soldiers' strength even if their forefathers defended North Korea in the 1950s against the UN army composed of 16 countries. Can the Chinese still fight after for decades of peace? However, the US military has been constantly in conflicts worldwide since the end of World War II, and it has gotten enough experience, good and bad, in North Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria, to name a few only. The Pentagon has long believed the Chinese army is not strong as the Russians, who have been way below Washington's expectations in the Ukraine war in the past 12 months. The unity of Western nations has also given American politicians the illusion that a new eight-nation alliance can be formed to mitigate China's military strength. We often say that America's ultimate goal is China, not Russia. A rumor goes that the US has stealthily contacted Moscow, hoping to end the Ukraine crisis by ceding 20% of Ukraine's sovereignty to Russia so it can shift its focus from Europe to East Asia. The Chinese balloon incident will not be over shortly, and many believe Democrats and Republicans will join hands rarely to launch a propaganda war against China. Let us wait and see how they will continue to play the game.